people are really scared about copyright um, and um, and the risks associated with copyright. And so they tend, uh, and the same thing with privacy as well too, and they say, oh, this is a copyright violation, I can't do this, I can't um, 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 dare get away with this. And the problem with copyright is it's often very difficult to know whether something's copyrighted, um, or if it is, who owns it, um, which means that the um, risks are actually a little bit lower in that case. Um, the um, there may not be anyone who knows about the copyright and so um, aren't going to come forward and complain about it. And we accept risks all the time in our business. Um, that um, when a researcher comes in and works with a paper collection, um, there's a risk that they're going to take a, um, that they may damage um, something while looking at it. Or they may slip it into a folder and walk out the door with it. Um, or they might um, use it in ways that um, we don't think are um, appropriate. Um, but we live with those risks uh, for our purpose and we mitigate um, them somewhat by having rules and procedures and other things. And I think we have to learn to live with more copyright risks um, in order to fill our mission. Um, mostly because the risks are incredibly low, especially if we're dealing with unpublished materials, that the, um, um, the damages that somebody can get are the, uh, for um, infringement of an unregistered item are their actual monetary damages or losses, which in most cases is, is nothing. And so for that reason, they are also not going to get a lawyer. Um, to do it. So um, people should not be scared about copyright. They should be willing to make copies of things for researchers. They should use um, the extent of the exceptions under the, that exist under the Copyright Act now for libraries and archives. They should be um, aggressive about fair use. They should probably avoid practices that would um, put them at greater risk, like tell people that, you know, if you're providing copies or you're letting them make copies, that um, this is for private study, scholarship, personal use, and if they want to do anything else, they should get permission of the copyright owner. They shouldn't be charging um, fees for the use of the material. Um, uh, for um, print or publication uses or other things, unless the copyright owner has um, the permission, uh, the, the user has permission of the copyright owner, because otherwise, you know, it uh, doesn't really look like it's for personal private uh, study scholarship research if you're charging them a publication fee, right? Um, the, um, and, um, and use a little bit of the archival good judgment. Um, so, here we have the papers um, of Ezra Cornell and uh, letters to and from him, the founder of the university. Well, um, before these entered the public domain, uh, we put them online. Um, I think it was in about in 2001, and the letters to Ezra Cornell wouldn't enter the public domain until 2003. But we sat down and said, you know, the chance that somebody who, uh, the, the copyright heir of somebody who wrote a letter to Ezra Cornell in 1870 is going to object to us putting it online is pretty small. Um, but if they do, we'll take it down. Um, we also have um, one of the large cl collections of James Joyce manuscripts. And we know that Stephen Joyce, his grandson, um, is very concerned about the copyright in those things. So we wouldn't digitize our James Joyce manuscripts and put them online because the risk there is great. Um, when you go over to the Kiel Center, they took their photographs, which are 
who knows the copyright status of those things? There, um, some of them may have been published. Some of them may be works for hire of the unions that have deposited their papers. Some of them uh, may belong to um, photographers who've gone out of business. They've put them online and and said that if you've got um, uh, concerns or objections, let us know. We want to hear about from the copyright owners and learn more about the photographs. I don't think they've heard any, um, have ever had um, a question about the photograph. So even though some of them are technically copyrighted, um, the um, uh, they're doing the right thing and, and sitting down and saying, you know, this is a lot more useful if it's online and handling it with a takedown notice. So I think that um, you should be no copyright, uh, know what the law says, know what the risks are. Uh, that's part of the educational campaigns that I try to do. Um, I like to say that I want archivists to knowingly violate the copyright law. <laughs> In other words, uh, know uh, whether, uh, whether something is likely to be in, in copyright or not, but then use the kind of um, risk assessment that we do in all of our other work to sit down and say, hey, isn't this really, uh, to meet our mission and our goals and what we're trying to do, let's try to make this stuff available.